Welcome to the latest Evershed Sutherland Legal Insights podcast. Welcome to this podcast, which is part of a series of podcasts on the UK Digital Markets Competition and Consumers Bill, or sometimes referred to as the DMCC. Just by way of a very quick update, the latest information that we have on the passage of the bill is the House of Commons will be considering the House of Lords amendments next week on Tuesday the 30th of April. And that means that if the bill passes through that process, then it could receive royal assent as early as next week. In today's podcast, we'll be providing an overview of the bill from a consumer law perspective and what it means for businesses. My name is Julia Woodward Carlton. I'm a partner in the Competition, Trade and Foreign Investment team at Evershed Sutherland, and I'm delighted to be joined today by my colleagues Eve England, a partner in the consumer team, and Zoe Haddon, a senior associate in the consumer team. So let's get started then. Eve, if I could just ask you to uh, give us a few words on what the key changes are that businesses can expect from the bill from a consumer law perspective. Yes, of course. Uh, well, the bill will make a number of changes that will impact consumer businesses here in the UK. The most significant change is that the bill will update and strengthen the way that consumer law is enforced here. It does this by making a wider range of corrective measures, including fines, available to the courts and to the Competition and Markets Authority for use against businesses that are not complying with their consumer law obligations. Other notable changes being introduced include a new set of rules that will apply to subscription contracts, as well as refreshing the existing unfair commercial practices framework to expressly prohibit practices such as fake reviews and drip pricing. Thank you, Eve. So, Zoe, if I can now turn to you and ask you to talk about the changes to enforcement powers and what these changes look like in practice for businesses. Yes. So the key takeaway from the bill's new enforcement powers is that for the first time, the CMA itself will be able to take enforcement action against businesses, whereas previously only the courts could determine whether a business was in breach of consumer law. So although the UK has had a robust set of consumer protection laws for some time, having redress via the courts only meant it was difficult in practice for non-compliant businesses to be held account. And once the bill is in force, the CMA will have its own powers to issue infringement decisions and to impose fines of up to 10% of annual global turnover. And they will also be able to take action for consumers affected by particular breaches and will be able to take action against businesses who are subject to CMA investigations or undertakings. And this is a significant change to the enforcement regime in the UK and looks to give the CMA a more meaningful set of powers to help deal with bad practices, but also to deter businesses from engaging in those infringing practices in the first place. Thank you, Zoe. So Eve, uh, you mentioned that there will be a new set of rules for businesses to comply with if they offer subscription contracts. Can you provide us with an overview of what businesses will need to be aware of? Yes, the new subscription rules will apply to any business who makes goods, services or digital content available to consumers on a subscription basis. More and more of us are signing up to subscription contracts and the rationale for including a separate regime to cover these arrangements has come about to help consumers avoid what has generally become known as subscription traps. So to help consumers better manage their subscription arrangements, the bill will require businesses to do four main things. Firstly, it will require traders to provide consumers with key pre-contract information separately and in writing before the subscription contract is entered into. This will include information about auto renewals, the charges that apply after any initial trial period, and also details about how the consumer can exit the contract. So consumers buying subscriptions will now also be given additional cooling off cancellation rights after certain renewal periods, which will be impacted by whether or not a trial or promotional period is offered at the start. Thirdly, businesses will also need to send consumers reminder notices, and the number and timing of these reminder notices will depend on when certain payments become due throughout the term. And finally, businesses will need to give consumers the ability to cancel their contract by notifying the trader in a straightforward way. This was originally drafted as being by means of a single communication, 
but helpfully the House of Lords have proposed an amendment which will allow businesses to instead facilitate a process that is straightforward for the customer to use. Uh, thank you. So we look forward to diving into the detail of the new subscription requirements in a later session uh, of this podcast series. So moving on now to the unfair commercial practices changes. And Zoe, could you just walk us through these? Yes. So as Eve mentioned earlier, the bill will absorb the existing provisions of the Consumer Protection from Unfair Trading Regulations 2008, which is the framework agreement that prohibits the use of certain unfair commercial practices by businesses. And the government has used the bill as an opportunity to update the list of prohibited practices to better reflect that more and more of us are contracting with businesses online. And the bill has now added fake reviews and drip pricing to the list of banned practices. There is also greater flexibility to make further changes to this list of prohibitions. And we are aware that the CMA is lobbying for certain greenwashing activities to be expressly listed here. This will mean that the unfair commercial practices regime will be better equipped to provide the government with flexibility to make adjustments to reflect changes in the way that traders engage with their customers. Thank you, Zoe. An awful lot of changes coming about. Um, Eve, what can businesses do now in order to prepare for the bill? Well, the new arsenal of enforcement powers given to the CMA in particular will certainly mean that consumer law compliance will need to sit high on the risk agenda for businesses. Now, businesses will really need to assess their processes, their website content, customer communications and other customer facing materials to ensure that they are all compliant with the consumer law requirements that are already in place, but also identifying how the bill's specific changes around banned practices and subscription rules will affect them. Because uh, as the new subscription rules particularly include procedural changes, any businesses that offer these subscriptions to consumers we'll need to consider how these impact on existing IT solutions and third party arrangements, for example, and to make sure that they give themselves enough time to implement the rules across their business processes. We also recommend that businesses respond to any consultations that the CMA issues after the bill is enacted, as we do expect to receive more practical guidance thereafter from the CMA on its approach to enforcement of consumer laws more generally. Well, thank you very much, both Eve and Zoe, and to everyone for listening. And I suppose just to note that even though we're expecting the bill to be enacted next week, um, as Eve has just mentioned, we are expecting there to be a period of consultation on guidance issued by the CMA with the law not really coming into force um, before October of this year. But if you do have any questions in the meantime on the consumer law changes being brought in under the bill, please do just get in touch. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Evershed Sutherland Legal Insights Podcast. 